let's review how to multiply and divide with fractions. But like always in mathematics, we like to start with a little review of arithmetic. Let's say you were going to multiply the number 5 times the number 3. You probably remember from your times tables that will give you the number 15. Well, it doesn't look like we had anything to do with fractions here, but in reality, we really did. Every number is a fraction. This is really five ones, five over the number one. This is really three over the number one. And this is really 15 over the number one. So you can see that you go five times three is 15, and we really go one times one is one. And you all know that three times five is 15. Well, this works exactly the same for fractions. So let's say we had another fraction like 5 over 6 times 2 over 3. So now what we do is we multiply the tops together. 5 times 2 is 10. We multiply the bottoms together. We get 6 times 3 is 18. But now this fraction can really be reduced. There's two different ways you can reduce a fraction. You can now take your end result and reduce the fraction. You probably all know that you can see that there's a 2 in the 10 and a 2 in the uh, 18. So we could call 10 2 times 5. We could call 18 2 times 9. We can now cancel the 2's out because 2 divided by 2 is, of course, the number 1. And 1 times any number is itself. So we get the final answer here of 5 over 9. We could have done that slightly different. We could have done 5 over 6 times 2 over 3. We could do a thing called cross-canceling, where we say, oh, look, the 6 and the 2 have something in common. We could take 2 into itself once. We could take uh, 2 into 6 three times. And now we get 5 times 1, which is 5. And we get 3 times 3, which is also 9. So there's two different ways to do the problem. You can go ahead and multiply it out and reduce at the end, or you can cross-cancel. I prefer to cross-cancel because of the fact that it seems like it's quicker and faster for me. Okay, let's take another number. Uh, let's take a mixed number. Let's say that we had the number 5 and 1 half, and we wanted to multiply it times some other fraction 3 quarters. Well, this mixed number, 5 and 1 half, gives us a little bit of a problem. We really need to take this into another form. This mixed number, since it has a whole part and a fraction part, is called a mixed number. We need to take this and turn it into what's called an improper fraction. And we do that by going 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1, which is really 11 halves. And 11 halves, of course, is the same thing as 5 halves, 5 and a half. And so we have 11 halves times 3 fourths. I can't see anything to cross cancel here, so we're just going to multiply straight across. 11 times 3 is 33, and 2 times 4 is 8. And that's also now an answer in the improper form. Always hated that word. It makes it sound like something's wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with an improper fraction. It's just a fraction that's bigger than 1. So we could always change that back by dividing the 8 into the 33. 8 goes into 33 four times. 4 times 8 is 32. Subtract and get 1, so we have 1 8 left over. So 33 eighths, an improper fraction, could be expressed as 4 and 1 8, which is now a mixed number. Okay, let's do a few more examples. Let's take now a whole number and multiply it by a fraction. Let's say we had the number 6, and we wanted to multiply it, say, times 2 thirds. Well, sometimes it's hard to see what to do here, but if we remember that the 6 is really 6 over 1, then we can now multiply straight across or do our cross-canceling. Again, I prefer to cross-cancel because it's a lot quicker. So I'm going to take 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 6 twice, and now we're going to get 2 times 2, which is 4, over 1 times 1, which is 1. And now, we're just going to drop that one and call it 4. Because we all agree that if we see a number like 7, that that's really 7 over 1. OK, let's take, uh, let's take another example of multiplication, and then we'll go to division. So let's take 6 and a half, and let's multiply it times 2 and a third. 
One of the things that I always did with this is I always said to myself, well, gosh, if it didn't have a half and a third, six times two is 12. So I would really think my answer is going to be a little bit bigger than 12. So if I make some kind of mistake and end up with an answer that's like five, I'll realize that I've made some sort of mistake. We call that estimation. But now let's convert both of these mixed numbers into improper's. So 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13 over 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1, which is 7 over 3. And now I can see that I don't really have anything that's going to cross cancel. 13 and 3 have nothing in common, 7 and 2. So I'm just going to multiply straight across. 7 times 3 is 21, carry the 2, 7, 8, 9. So that's 91. And 2 times 3 is now 6. And uh, that, to me, is an, is an acceptable answer. But again, we could change that into a mixed number. 6 will go into 9 once, subtract the 6 and get 3, bring down the 1. 6 goes into 31 5 times. 5 times 6 is 30. We subtract and get 1. So our final answer is 15 and 1 6. And like I said before, 6 times 2 is 12. But since it has a little bit bigger part, we'd expect it to be a little bigger than 12. And 15 and a sixth is, is a little bigger than 12. So I'm assuming I probably didn't make a mistake. OK, I think that's enough of the multiplication of fractions. Let's go into division of fractions, because they're very, very related. Um, if we had a number like uh, 2 thirds, there's two ways to write the division. We can say 2 thirds is divided by, say, 3 fourths. And that's one way to write it. We could also do it horizontally. This is more vertically. We could take 2 thirds and uh, divide it by 3 fourths. So both of these ways of writing the division of two fractions is exactly the same. So you could change one into the other, whichever works better for you. I prefer it this way. And the reason I prefer it this way is that actually when we end up dividing that's really the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I'll show you a better example of that in just a minute after we get done with this, process, this problem. So what we're going to do is you leave the first fraction, or the fraction on top, you leave it alone. And now what you do is instead of dividing by 3 fourths, you actually multiply by the reciprocal of 3 fourths, which is now 4 thirds. And now we'll do our regular multiplication. Now the division problem has become a multiplication problem. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8, and 3 times 3, which is 9, and that's a proper fraction less than 1, so that would be our final answer. All right, let me show you why we end up multiplying by fractions when we're actually dividing. If somebody asked you, what is 1 half of 10? You probably know the answer in your head. We've all had 10 bucks and had to give half to our brother and sister. And of in multiplication is really times. And you guys all know that that's five. Well, look, if we had $10 and we had to divide it by two people, wouldn't we end up with the same number five? So multiplying by a half, dividing by two is the same exact thing. And of course, 1 half and 2, its reciprocal is 2 over 1. That's why we end up multiplying and not really dividing. So let's do one more quick example. And let's say that we had uh, 1 and 2 thirds divided by uh, 2 thirds. So we'll immediately change this to the improper fraction, which is 5 over 3 divided by 2 over 3. We'll invert and multiply so that we now have 5 thirds times 3 over 2. The 3's will cancel out for us. They go into each other one time, and we get 5 halves, which you probably all know is also 2 and a half. So there's our final answer. And that's really how simple division by fractions is. You're really going to change it to multiplication. OK, now one other thing that I wanted to talk about was division by 0. You guys know that the way you explain a fraction, 1 half, is you divide something into two people, pieces and take one of them. Or divide something into five pieces and take three of them. So if you broke something into zero pieces and took two of them, what in the heck could that ever really equal? Well, it can't equal anything. 
because you can't take something and divide it into zero equal parts. Even with a hand phaser, that does not work. So, to remember, you can never divide by zero. That's not defined in mathematics. And the one thing to re always remember about fractions is they are not difficult. They are very simple. You can do them. They have never hurt anybody. Have a good day.